Well, it's been a long time since we've done a video like this. With Mortal Kombat 1 launching last September, along with reviewing the first three rankings and community interest, All Costumes Ranked is back. Today, we're taking a look at the Thunder God of the franchise, Lord Raiden, and we'll be ranking all 26 of his designs from the worst to the best. Fight! Good morning, afternoon, and evening everyone, Nick here, and welcome to, or welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel and have a knick-knack for some fighting games, click the subscribe button for more Mortal content. Today we're revisiting the long-awaited ranking series to return to the channel with the highly requested character to be covered, Raiden. With three timelines in total, his design has changed quite a bit. We're going to determine and rank the good, bad, and ugly designs for this character. In case you're new to this series or need a recap, here are the ground rules. Some of them have changed due to the recent title. I'll only be basing off the original costume from a title. If it's repeated, such as a classic skin remade as DLC, that'll count as only one placement. And for this video, I'll only be looking at costumes that appeared in the games. Raiden is special in this regard since Christopher Lambert was DLC in MK11, since there's an in-game version of it that will be included in this ranking. And I'll go only off the base designs without gear or color alterations. This will be a huge factor when we look at MK11. MK1 and Injustice 2. And this is a special case exclusively in regards to MK1 as Raiden has a few variants exclusive to the story. These include the Shaolin robes, the Dark Raiden costume, Titan Raiden, and even the DeviantArt OCs that you'll run into into the final chapter. Since I can't look at all the models without modding the game, and since they aren't technically playable, they aren't going to be included in this ranking. With the rules established, let's put on our hats, equip our amulets, and consult the Elder Gods and rank all 26 of Raiden costumes across the entire Mortal Kombat series. So we are starting off this list by looking at the... Oh, hang on, sorry, I need to take this real quick. Hello? Hey brother, it's Nick from S. What's up? How's that ranking coming along? Oh hey, funny you mentioned that. We just started at the bottom spot right now. Nice. Which costume is it? Ah, yes. Tron Raiden. Seriously, what was NetherRealm Studios thinking when they made this costume? It looks like it came straight out of the movie Tron. Nothing like a Mortal Kombat design, especially for a badass Thunder God. It's just ugly, like real fucking ugly. You need to link your copy of Mortal Kombat X to WB Play in order to unlock this costume. Why not a more enticing costume as a reward? I guess NetherRealm Studios knew nobody would want to pay for this junk. The neon is jarring and stands out in game, and I mean, what future does he come from to be named Future Raiden? A future where neon is cool fighting attire? Maybe if the suit had electricity pulsing through it, and the armor didn't look so clunky, it would look a bit better, but unfortunately, that's not the case. It's a plain, forgettable design, and the neon is really the only memorable part about it. Not to mention, what's up with that god-awful goatee? As if this costume couldn't get any worse, a shoehorn goatee when Raiden has never had a beard before is just the cherry on top. No thanks. Not my Raiden. Stay in the future, big guy. Phew. Sorry, I got a bit carried away there. What do you think of this costume, my fellow Nick? Well, you said pretty much everything I was gonna say. Is there anything else you want to add about it? I've heard fans refer to this costume as Tron Raiden more than its official name, Future Raiden. It's so forgettable people can't even remember the name. I'm glad we agree that this is the worst costume for Raiden. Anyways, good luck on the rest of your video. Hey, thanks for calling. Talk to you soon. Yeah, pretty much everything he just said. This skin sucks. Already jumping into the PS2 era with number 25 with Mortal Kombat Deception, taking a look at his alternate costume. Not only is this a rework of his Deadly Alliance alternate costume, but it's a worse version of it. Sure, the red eyes are a nice touch, but there are a few things that I'm not just the biggest fan of. For starters, the monk beads are really huge and they don't really feel like they fit Raiden. I feel Akuma would like to have a word with you on that. Also, the gray scaling of this costume makes this come off more generic rather than another variant of Dark Raiden. Nothing of this costume really pops off and makes you go, oh, that's Raiden. His hat's on his back and you can barely see it. He really just looks more like a generic guy you'd beat up in an action-adventure game. Overall, this is probably the worst take of Dark Raiden, if you ask me. This early on the list and we are looking at MK11's crazy customization, starting things off with the Halloween DLC, the Impaler variants. On paper, this is a fine costume. It looks evil and matches Dark Raiden's tone. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, I really feel like this is paired with the wrong character. I feel this vampire costume fits better for someone like Scarlet or Melina. Sure, it's cool they gave him a hat and made his face bloody along with the gothic clothing, but this really should have gone to a different character where it would have fit better. Many could argue and say that well, it's supposed to not fit well, it's a Halloween costume, but hey, look at the Blizzard King variant, that ranked really high and it perfectly fit Sub-Zero. Even if you didn't know it was a Halloween costume, it just looked like a regular costume for him. This is just really out of place for him. It's a cool concept overall, it's fun, but it's one that I rarely ever use. Unlike a vampire, it doesn't totally suck, it just could have been better. And speaking of could have been better, we're entering the world of caped wonders and dark knights with his base design from Injustice 2. To start with the positives, I do like the leggings, the boot, and the hat. It breaks the tradition by going with a new material for the hat instead of the rice farmer hat he's had before. The shoulders are a nice carryover from more modern Raiden designs, such as the one from MK9. And on top of that, the cape is a good addition. It fits better than Sub-Zero, if you ask me. Unfortunately, that's about it for the positives. This costume is just all over the place to fit the superhero world, and I feel it could have been better. Breaking away from the traditional look and adding some unnecessary metallic pieces, specifically at the face, I think it looks absolutely ridiculous. Along with that, they replaced the chest piece with some leather armor with studs. His arms are more bare, and his chest is exposed. If you removed the hat, it honestly looks like a character you'd see in DC Universe Online, not Raiden. For me, I think it would have been better if they kept the traditional top he usually has, the white robes, but adding the blue armor over it to make it stand out a bit more. Along with that, adding some sleeves. I know many people were disappointed with Raiden's inclusion in the game, but I was more disappointed with his overall design. Whew, this early on the list and we're looking at where it all started? Mortal Kombat Classic. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a cool design for Raiden, but I don't think this one really held up over time. I can't be too harsh on it since resources were limited, but unlike the ninjas, this this costume from this game doesn't really have that timeless element that would go to Raiden's design in the sequels. I feel like the white is too bright and if they added something else it would help tone it down a little bit. Maybe some blue for the sequel. And the one defining feature he has is his hat and the electricity that channels through him. It's also nice that they included this costume in MKX with this tournament costume with almost no changes, which is why I decided to lump both of those entries into one. It's not a bad costume at all, I want you to know that. But like comparing Evil Dead to Evil Dead 2, Raiden found his character and charm in the sequel. Jumping ahead several installments and looking at the classic combatant variants from Mortal Kombat 11. You'd think that I would have these lumped into the same classic set, but there are some differences that help separate it and make it stand out. For one, the long center part of the classic is replaced with a more robe-like look. It's less loose than the previous costume and it's more tight-fitting. Instead of having the black around his sleeves and his neck, they added some gauntlets, which I think was a good call. And my favorite little detail is the pattern woven onto his outfit. It's a good way to modernize the classic MK look, even while being a pretty basic and simple design. It's not one to get any thunderous applause on the design runway, but it's still one appreciated by longtime fans. We are looking at the first of a few variants of Dark Raiden in Mortal Kombat 11, this being the Touched by Evil costumes. To be honest, this looks a lot like the classic combatant variant we just saw, just with a darker coat of paint. It does retain some elements of the Merciless Guardian variant, or the main costume for Raiden in this game, but it removes a bunch of the armor on the chest and replaces it with a sash going across his chest. Similar to one of the lower ranked Sub-Zero costumes that's not Demetri Vegas, they just removed aspects to make it its own costume. So by removing elements and features from another skin just to make it its own, this makes it go down a bit on the list. It's literally a lesser version of another costume. We're Taking a look away from gaming monitors and looking at the silver screen with a movie skin of Raiden portrayed by Christopher Lambert. It's cool to see them pay tribute and nail the movie design. Even with the Series X upgrade, the woven cloth on the design really pops and it looks so good. It's also a rare case to see Raiden with hair. Also, the likeliness of switching Lambert was a great choice instead of going for a inspired by approach that other games would do. Though I've said in the past that Christopher Lambert is not my favorite Raiden. Raiden, I can't deny they did a great job adapting this costume into this game. I really can't think of a good pun for this movie skin of Raiden, so I'll just leave you with this laugh. <laughs> 
Oh man, already at 18 and we are looking at the latest title in the series, Mortal Kombat 1. Raiden's alternate design, the Union of Light, makes its way right here. This costume is pretty similar to one of his PS2 alternates, being more robe-like. Instead of wearing white with a blue vest over it, they decided to clash both the white and blue with this robe, and I think it looks pretty nice. I do like how one sleeve has a bunch of accents and details to it, such as the gold along with the blue, it really just pops a ton. I also love the crazy detail to this costume, it really looks like it was woven and made by hand. One of the big differences between the robe designs from the PS2 era and this one is that the hat stays on his head. Honestly, I think it would have been nice to see the hat on his back so we could see more of his hair, but overall, I think it's a good look. Also, sorry I don't have the base color for this costume yet, I haven't really grinded out the game in some time and have been super busy, so let's pretend I've been using it this whole time. And speaking of mentioning robe designs, we are looking at our first drastic change in Raiden's design, his alternate costume in Deadly Alliance. At the time, I remember hearing many people say that this was a pretty bad design for the character, as it broke many of the traditions he had throughout the series. It may not be many people's favorites, but I really like this one. It takes elements from his base design, but making some cool alterations to it. It removes one whole sleeve and exposes one half of his chest. On top of it, it also removes his hat and the hood so you can see his hair out for once. Along with that, he's rocking a katana and wearing hakama pants. With these crazy changes in his design, many people dub this one Samurai Raiden. I think it's a really cool and unique take of the character. It makes him come off more warrior-like than anything. I'd really like to see this one adapted somewhere in the series. I know many are surprised this one is up so high, and like what Raiden is known for, it's quite shocking. Jumping in at number 16 and looking at the first 3D title in the series, Mortal Kombat 4. After missing out in Mortal Kombat 3 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Raiden made his return with a pretty safe but slightly different design. Some of his design is slightly the same than before, with the white and then the blue vest, but they ended up tightening up the vest so it's not as big as before. They also added some nice shoulder pads to his design, something that would be retained in future designs. And one other aspect that they added that's slightly interesting is that they added a Japanese symbol on his loincloth. Usually they would be on the sleeves, but I think this is a nice change. It's a pretty cool re-adaptation of this design and a good way to fit it into a 3D game. Not really much else to say, it's a safe and good design. Speaking of nice and safe designs, we're looking at the very controversial title in the series, Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe. I've bashed on his first outfit for looking too superhero-like while not fitting the character. This is a good way to adapt it for a new universe. It's a nice and modernized version of his classic design minus the sleeves and replacing it with gauntlets and more padded shoulder pads. I also like how they added the detail by putting some rope around his waist and adding a black undershirt to his design. I know many people are mixed on having Raiden with exposed arms, it didn't bother me too much, but I think it fits this design and universe well. Also, Raiden having a cape, that just looks nice too. Not much else to say about this one, it's another good design. It's been a while since we've looked at our dark Raiden design, so let's look at where it all started with Mortal Kombat Deception. After failing to defeat Onaga in the opening of Mortal Kombat Deception's movie, and due to Shujinko's failings of releasing Onaga once again, Raiden swore that he wouldn't have the will of men to determine the fate of the realm. Hence, he turned to the dark side and became Dark Raiden, and he would be a threat to anyone who opposed the realm. And I'd say for the first design with this, it looks really good. I do love that they changed his hat design to have these cool little horns to it. It makes him look a little bit more evil and more Oni-like. His hands are no longer exposed, and he's completely covered up, only exposed exposing his face with some dark evil red eyes. I also like that he's more armored in comparison to previous Raiden designs. It's a cool way to make Dark Raiden stand out. Along with that, I also love how his cape looks in this. It's not clean like his other ones, and it's all tattered and torn. For a first go with this dark design, I think it looks really good, but I do prefer some of the modernized versions that they've done with this character. Not bad at all, I think it's really good. Darth Sidious would be quite impressed with your dark turn. Speaking of Dark Raiden designs, we're looking at his alternate costume from Mortal Kombat 9. This was featured in the beginning of the Mortal Kombat 9 story mode after Raiden and Shao Kahn were having their slight little tussle at the top of the pyramid. This was still Dark Raiden at this point, and they did a great job updating it. He looks more armored, the cape is more torn, and I do love how much his red eyes just pop in this design. They also changed his hat a little bit too. It still retains some of the elements from before, 
but it looks a little bit more like the MKX design where you can see through some of the hat. This costume is more armored than the previous one too, so it really looks like he's ready to go into battle and not think twice about killing someone. My only real complaint is that the only color that pops is black. There's really no other color to this design. That would be something that would be included in future Dark Raiden costumes. I still think this is a great design and I really like it. I'd probably put this at a high B tier if you ask me. We are once again looking at Mortal Kombat 4, but taking a look at his alternate costume. Instead of updating and adding some more stuff to his current design, they decided to go back and look at MK2 for inspiration with this one. For one, the loincloth is a lot shorter, but retains the Japanese symbol from his base design. But if there's one thing they do that helps make it pop is that his vest retains the MK2 look while adding gold to his biceps, really making the color stand out. Not much else to say with this one, I think they just did a good job with it. Speaking of mentioning Mortal Kombat 2, we are looking at his base design from that game. For many people, this is probably the most iconic Raiden design. Even with the limited colors back in the day, his costume just really pops. The white and blue are just a perfect blend. I also like that his outfit isn't super tight fitting and ready for combat. Combat. It just looks like he's wearing robes and just someone asked him to fight and he's like, all right, screw it, I'll get up there. Also, one of my favorite details is that the hat obscures his eyes the whole match until he does his victory pose at the end of the fight, revealing some nice blue eyes. From this point on, many games actually use this as the basis for Raiden's costume, so I can really say that they did a great job with this one, and it comes to show that all of the future designs have been modernized to great effect. Stay cool, MK2 Raiden. The more I think about it, it's honestly a shame that this costume didn't show up in any classic skin packs, I would have loved to have seen this. If you thought we were done looking at Mortal Kombat 2 Raiden, we're not because we're looking at the Shaolin Monks version of this character. I know there are technically two models in this game, one of them is this art render, and there's an in-game version that looks slightly different. I'm going to be basing off of the in-game version. Even though you don't get to play as him, I thought I would like to include it on here. Now similar to what I said about the MK4 and the MK Classic, they did a great job with this one while making some slight updates to not make it feel over designed. They added the nice yellow circles with the Japanese character, and they even included the nice shoulder pads that would be retained in the Mortal Kombat 9 design. I even like the gold that's added outside of his vest. I think it looks really good, along with the black belt. And in some other cases, you can see that the hat is pretty big and it obscures some of his face. It's just a little shame that when you see him in cutscenes, the camera angles show his face quite a ton. I really would have loved that mystery element that MK2 implemented with this design. Overall, another amazing way to adapt this costume. Yet another way to adapt the classic design with Mortal Kombat X, specifically the base design. As you'll begin to notice, they decided to retain the white robes with the blue vest over it. However, they decided to add on top of the blue vest to make it pop a bit more and that's adding the gold accents to it. Along with that, this is one of the first times that we see his hat drastically change for his base design. No longer is it just woven together in pieces, but there's actually some slight slits in there where you can see through it. Though it's a little bit of a negative of mine because you can see more of his face a lot, something else pointed out by Uncommon Oddity, and even an element implemented in Dark Raiden from MK9, but it's at least a cool attempt to make it look a little different. They've even updated his gauntlets and shin pads to add some nice uh, decals to it rather than having some black straps over it. Along with that, the loincloth is even updated and it doesn't have a character anymore, but it also has that decal that matches the vest. I even like the inclusion of the ropes around his waistline. It's something we rarely see in Raiden's designs, but when it's there, it's a nice addition. Not much else I can say, it's just a really good rework of a classic. Let's keep looking at MKX at number 8 with Dark Raiden. I know this is mixed on many people, either some people aren't the biggest fan of it because of MKX's color grading or some people just love it a ton, such as, oh, wouldn't you know what? I got another phone call. Hey, what's up? Hey, did you get to my favorite, Mortal Kombat X Dark Raiden yet? Funny you mention that. We just got to number eight with Dark Raiden. How about you take it over? Mortal Kombat X Dark Raiden has always been an interesting case to me, as it's basically the polar opposite of the regular Raiden we all know and love. But it just works so damn well. It reminds me of the infamous games where your character's appearance changes based on your decisions for good or evil. Dark Raiden is a menace and has always had an intimidating on-screen presence. So it's only fitting he has a gothic appearance to go along with that. There's nothing wrong with Mortal Kombat 11 Dark Raiden, 
I just prefer Mortal Kombat X's version. I agree a lot with you there. This is actually one of the skins I prefer most in MKX. Though I am more of a fan of the MK11 Dark Raiden, I still appreciate this one a ton for a lot of good reasons. For one, this is something that MK11 Dark Raiden doesn't have, and if you look closely you can see he has really long black nails. Also adding to that gothic touch, it's just really creepy. I also think that the color of this costume matches the art style of MKX quite a ton. Even the little hint of red in his suit's really cool, along with Shinnok's amulet to his chest, just showing that he's getting more corrupted with power. Along with that, I also just love the hat that he has. It's very similar to his deception design. And final thing, I really love the shoulder pads. They just really pop, and they're probably my favorite of any of the Dark Raiden costumes. And just like that, that's a wrap on MKX. But we are not finished looking at Dark Raiden, which at number 7, we're looking at the Electric Storm variants. This is extremely similar to his base design from this game. However, the only differences really being are the chest piece, shoulder pads, and the waistline that he has. There's some different details that you can notice on his chest piece, more that it's pointed, same with the shoulder pads as well. But if you ask me, this is only just a little extra, and I think it's slightly leaning on over-designed if you ask me. I still really like it though, which is a perfect transition to my preferred Dark Raiden costume, which is Merciless Guardian from Mortal Kombat 11. When they first showed this off at the Mortal Kombat 11 gameplay reveal, trailer at the Game Awards, I immediately lost it when I saw this Raiden design. He finally looks super evil and it looks like he's been completely corrupted, which is what I love. I also think this is a major improvement over some of the other Dark Raiden designs. Instead of his costume having a grayscale look with just red eyes, he now has a really, really dark green underclothing with gold armor and some sprinkles of red to make it pop a little bit more. I also love the little accents and details with his clothing. It's just that extra attention to detail I love. It's just a shame that we don't get to see this design too much in the story mode, as as soon as the timelines merge, we lose Dark Raiden. Though we see him for a little bit, it was a real treat seeing this costume in the story mode. By far my favorite Dark Raiden design to date. We are entering the top 5 and entering the new era with the latest installment. Say what you want about this game, but I think new era Raiden looks amazing. Instead of making him Earthrealm's protector by being a thunder god, he's now Earthrealm's champion picked by Lord Liu Kang. With the huge reboot to the character, we also got a crazy redesign too. This almost reminds me of a modified version of MK11 Liu Kang. He has a solid color of pants being blue, and he has a button-up vest that's white still retaining the white and blue aspects of classic Raiden. He still retains his hat, which still looks really good and more detailed than ever. I even love how you can see the stitching lines of blue in there. One of my favorite things that I'm happy we got to see is the return of his hair. The strands look amazing, and it's cool that you can see that it's bunned up in the back. It's crazy how much detail they just put into something you rarely see. Along with that, he retains the amulet from the MK9 storyline, but instead it's now put around his belt, which also looks good. Another element that I really love is that his eyes only go blue when he uses electric powers. It's not blue because he's a god, he's just immortal with powers of electricity, and they only go blue when he uses his power, which is just a great addition. I know many people are mixed on MK1 overall, but I can really say that they nailed it when it came to the character redesigns, Raiden being one of my absolute favorite ones. Headed into the final four, looking at Raiden's base design from Deadly Alliance. Yet another great, unique take by expanding what he's known for. When Deadly Alliance Alliance came out, it was the title Midway spent the most development time on to make sure they could reimagine characters in the new console era, and they nailed it with Raiden, maintaining the blue vest and white clothing, but getting a little bit more creative with it. For starters, there are some nice gold accents added to the costume, helping it pop a bit more. Another thing that I love is they made the hood less tight to expose some of his hair. Rarely we ever get to see Raiden's hair, but it's a nice way to include it in there without just removing the hood. I really wish NRS games did this more. Along with that, instead of adding the emblems on his arms that would have the Japanese symbols, they sew it onto the sleeves instead, just making it pop a whole lot. It's a really great decal onto his costume. And one final thing, I absolutely love the cape that they went with for this design. It just makes him look more magical and empowering. This was actually my first introduction to Raiden, and what a hell of a way to introduce him. This design is just electrifying. Entering the top three with what's regarded to be the best MK game, Mortal Kombat 9 with Raiden's base design. With this game being a readaptation of the trilogy, so too was this design and I think this was such an amazing way to do it. It retained a lot of the original design from Mortal Kombat 2, but heavily updated it to make it look modern and up to date.
His clothes look very traditional and they have a really nice detail to it. Instead of some big yellow neon circles that he has on his arms with the Japanese text on it, there are now gold pieces put in there instead. And his vest is back to being very traditional, not over the top and it's not underwhelming either. It's just perfect. Along with that, we get the shoulder pads retained from Mortal Kombat 4 and the new amulet that's a huge crucial point to the story. Perfect additions to include into this costume. If you were a big fan of classic Raiden in the arcade era, you'll absolutely love this design. It's near perfect. But there are unfortunately two more that I like more that do this design slightly better. Our runner-up will come from Mortal Kombat 11, being the Mythologies variant. In the previous entry, talk about another great way of adapting a classic look. This one borrows a lot of elements from the trilogy design, but adds some elements from MK11's classic combatant skin. There are some details that help stand out with the cloth, looking more like waves on the blue vest retained from MK2's design. Though it's very similar to classic as a combatant, the blue edition, along with the rope around the waist, helped make it stand out a ton. For many people, this is the definitive Raiden design, and I can see where they're coming from, which is why it's so high on the list. This looks like you just updated Raiden for the modern era. But as much as I like this one, there's one that I like just slightly more than this one. And it's been a long road, but finally at number one with my personal favorite and what I consider to be my definitive Raiden look, Earthrealm's Protector variants from Mortal Kombat 11. Now, now when I picture Raiden in my head, this is what I think of. Featured heavily in the Mortal Kombat 11 story mode, they chose the right costume to be featured. Instead of the usual vest and classic design as the Mythologies variant had, they decided to update the vest by making it more imposing, helping them come off more godlike. I also love the gold accents included on the chest and the loincloth. It's just a nice pop that makes it help stand out a bit more. And along with that, the white and blue have an even balance, which are perfectly implemented into the design. I just love this costume so much. It's my definitive Raiden design. So for me, Earthrealm's Protector is the best Raiden design of all of Mortal Kombat. So there's my ranking of all 25 of Raiden's costumes from the worst to the best. Let me know which one of them is your favorite down below. Which era of Raiden do you prefer? Thunder God, Dark Raiden, or New Era Raiden? Let's share down below and let's not attack each other over our rankings. Instead, let's just have a fun discussion down below. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to my brother to the north, Nickfamous, for ranting and sharing his favorite Raiden design. In case you don't know who he is, his channel covers horror, Dragon Ball Z, and fighting games, so be sure to check out his channel. I'll link it right here. I really appreciate that, Nick. It's been a blast being a part of your video. It's always nice to collaborate with a fellow Mortal Kombat fan. Raiden is such a cool character who's had great costumes, awful costumes, and everything in between. I'm glad I could share my thoughts today, and I welcome any of your viewers to my channel. I'm happy to bring back this series. I've got plenty more characters I want to cover, and I think it would be a fun way to cover characters with limited appearances, but with drastic redesigns. Your feedback means a ton to this channel, as it helps determine which content gets covered. Next time, we're going to continue all costumes ranked, and look at probably the most popular female fighter from Mortal Kombat, Melina. So stay tuned when that'll drop next. I'd also like to expand all costumes ranked by covering more franchises. Anyone want to see a character ranking for the Yoshimitsu designs? That'd be fun. Also, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and share this video. Your support means a ton to this channel. As always, thank you so much for tuning into this video. My name is Nick, and have an amazing rest of your day. Fight.